Section 477, product to sum and sum to product formulas. So we use these when we have a product and a sum is better, or we have a sum and a product would be better, which right now is just practice, but in calculus there are times when we need one versus the other. So I'm gonna take those sum and difference formulas from last section and add them together. So if you look back last section, um, these formulas should look similar. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the left sides together. This is allowed because the two equations are equal, so the left and right side are equal. So we add those together on the left side. On the right side, we have two of the same thing. Those are weird like terms, two cosine x1, cosine x2, and then the signs cancel out. And we get this new formula when we divide by two, where we have a product and a sum. So you notice we have a sum on the left side and a product on the right side. So we're gonna start with the product to sum formulas. So I derived the cosine one for you. You should see what we just derived matches. You could do similar math to derive the other two. And so we'll use these when we have a product and want a sum. So in this first example, we have a product and we want a sum, so we use product to sum. So we have a product of cosines, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the cosine formula cosine times cosine. You'll see they're all pretty similar. A product of sines um, turns into a difference of cosines. A product of cosines is a sum of cosines. And then a mixed match sine and cosine turns into a sum of sines. And again, they're all derived from these formulas, so you could derive them if you want to be convinced. Let's go ahead and just plug in. So cosine of five theta, that'll be my x1 times cosine of two theta, that'll be my x2, equals one half. Cosine of five theta minus two theta plus cosine of five theta plus two theta. Just plug it into the formula. So we get one half. Then we'll get cosine of three theta plus cosine of seven theta. And we've rewritten it as a sum. I might get rid of parentheses and just distribute the one half, but that's pretty much it. Um, since we're taking this class to prepare for calculus, um, this will actually be really useful because products, there are a lot of things you can't do with products. So the sum will be useful. Um, another thing we might use this for is again, when we have unit circle, we have angles we don't know on the unit circle. So in this next example, we don't know pi over 12 on the unit circle. So maybe if we rewrite a product, right, it's currently a product, maybe if we rewrite it as a sum, maybe we'll get better angles. So let's find the sine times sine formula. So the sine times sine formula turns into a difference of cosines. Don't worry, we're not memorizing this, but we are using it. So x1 will be pi over 4 and x2 will be pi over 12. So we get 1 half cosine of pi over 4 minus pi over 12 minus cosine of pi over 4 plus pi over 12. Which doesn't seem that useful yet, but maybe when we simplify these, they'll be better. So let's see, pi over 4 would be 3 pi over 12 minus pi over 12, which gives me 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6. So that's promising because we know that on the unit circle. Um, let the second one, pi over 4, again, is 3 pi over 12. This time, plus pi over 12. We get 4 pi over 12, which is 3 pi over 3, right? So again, yay, both of these are on the unit circle. So we have made a good choice with our identity. So I'm just going to rewrite it, 1 half cosine pi over 6 minus cosine of pi over 3, and we're happy because both are on the unit circle. And we're going to continue to use the unit circle. We're not using a calculator because it's not giving us exact answers, and we want exact values. So cosine is my x. Um, pi over 6 would be down here. So in terms of 
cosine, that's my long side. So that'll be um, root 3 over 2 is the long side. So I'll put root 3 over 2 under cosine of pi over 6. Uh, cosine of pi over 3, we'll look at the x value again. Um, it looks like it's the short side, so 1 half. So minus 1 half. And then all of this times 1 half. So we get root 3 over 4 minus 1 over 4. And maybe I'll just make it one fraction. Square root of 3 minus 1 all over 4. And that's considered our exact answer. Exact answers are better. Rounding is bad. All right, let's try one final example. So these are just really the reverse of the other formulas. So if I took these ones and I solved, um, actually no, these came from other formulas. But they're kind of the reverse in idea. We can just take some of the old formulas and solve for these. Um, so these are useful when we start with a sum, a sum of sines or a difference of cosines or cosines. Um, this is a different formula than when we had a sum inside, right? This is an inner sum. We did those a couple sections ago. The sum is more of like an outer sum. So they look similar, but they are different. So this first example, we can use the cosine sum. So we have cosine of pi over 12 plus cosine of, cosine of five pi over 12 plus cosine of pi over 12. This is not the same as the sum being inside. Two totally different processes and totally different results. So let's go ahead and use a formula again, because again, we don't know these on the unit circle. We don't know 5 pi over 12 or pi over 12 on the unit circle. And so hopefully these identities will give me better angles. And if not, then got to try something else. So x1 will be 5 pi over 12 and x2 will be pi over 12, and we'll use the one I highlighted. So we get 2 cosine, 5 pi over 12 plus pi over 12 all over 2, times, this is a product, cosine of 5 pi over 12 minus pi over 12 all over 2. And then let's see, we get 2 cosine, 6 pi over 12 over 2 times cosine of 4 pi over 12 over 2. It's looking ugly, but I promise it'll get better. 2 cosine of 6 pi over 24 times cosine of 4 pi over 24. And these are ugly, but they do simplify. And then we'll be able to complete this. So we get 2 cosine. 6 and 24 becomes pi over, what do they have in common? 6, pi over 4. And then cosine of pi over 6. And we know both of these on the unit circle. So I know the formulas are super ugly and annoying, but the whole goal is to get angles that we know. So we'll go to pi over 4. That'll be right there. Um, that's that medium side, so root two over two. So two times root two over two. And then pi over six is down here. That's the long side for cosine. Remember we're doing cosine. So the long side was root three over two. So we get two times square root two over two times square root 3 over 2. Some of the 2's cancel out, and we get square root of 2 times square root of 3, which is square root of 6, all over 2. So square root of 6 over 2 is my exact answer. And we're going to leave it as is. Um, so just be patient with formulas. It's possible you make the wrong choice. So if things don't get better, pick a different formula. But let me know if you have questions.